Hey, you guys, thanks for listening into this episode of Tips with Tea. On today, I have Miss Hannah with us. Hey, Miss Hannah, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you today, T? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, of course. So I am I'm a business coach, first and foremost. It's my passion to help women start businesses um, that they're passionate about, that they love, that they're lit up by. And it really is a business that just kind of made its way to me. I, uh, I didn't saw, I didn't go out after it. You know, I wasn't trying to become a business coach. I just had a few of my clients come to me and they're like, Hannah, you're actually coaching me with my business. And so I think you should be a business coach. So I was like, you know what? I agree. So I'm a, I live in Southern California. I'm self-employed, obviously business coach. I'm a single mom and my daughter and I just really love having quality time together. Um, family is important to me. And that's really why I do what I do mm -hmm. for myself to have the freedom and flexibility, but also to make sure that other women, especially single moms can create that same flexibility and freedom in their life. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so how can we identify our purpose before we start a business? Because, you know, a lot of people, they want to be entrepreneurs, they want to be business owners, but how can they identify their purpose? Because that's essential when it comes to starting a business. Because if you don't know where you're going, then what's the purpose? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You have to have, you have to have a why you have to have a purpose, like the whole motivating factor behind what you do, because business is not you know, it's not all sunshine and daisies. Like there are plenty of days. I actually just had a conversation the other day about how, you know, sometimes the inner work that we have to do as entrepreneurs to take ourselves to the next level every single time. Sometimes I'm like, screw it. I don't want to do this anymore. This is too much work, but my purpose always brings me back. And so identifying our purpose, I always say, first of all, your purpose can kind of change throughout your life. Mm -hmm. I definitely have a common theme within my purpose and it's kind of, fluctuated over the years. Um, but we find our purpose, I believe, by evaluating our prior life experiences. Mm -hmm. So the things that have happened to us or the um, struggles we've overcame, or maybe just lessons we've learned, maybe it's our actual, you know, education. But at the end of the day, I always like to go back to our childhood, our adolescence and our early adulthood, and identify emotional moments in those areas. So this could be good or bad, but just something that brought about a big emotion that had a, a heavy um, experience of some kind. Mm -hmm. And then we look at what's the common theme here. And for me, in each of them, the common theme was that I felt alone. I felt not good enough. I felt not wanted. Mm -hmm. I felt disempowered. And I realized that my purpose is just the opposite of that. My purpose is to make sure that women feel connected, that they know they're not alone. You know, my purpose is to build a community of, of women who want to impact the lives of others um, and really just to empower women to take control of their life. So I think our, our purpose lies in our story. We can turn our, our pain into our purpose, you know, we can take the hard parts of our life. But again, it, it could be the good things too. maybe, you know, you had a really great emotional experience of some kind as a kid, and you want to duplicate that for others. So maybe your purpose, you know, rests in something positive. Wasn't the case for me. It's not the case for most people, honestly, because everyone has trauma. So a lot of people, their purpose stems from the trauma that they've experienced. Yeah, I'm learning that too. But, you know, once you identify that purpose, that purpose can help to drive passion or create yeah. passion. So how can we take that passion and turn it into profit? Yeah, so, you know, like I said, my my passion now, my purpose now is to bring women together and to create freedom for women, to help them create freedom. And that came from the, the the pain that I experienced as a young single mom, not having any freedom or flexibility that came from my experiences um, with my parents, you know, they, my dad especially worked all the time. And so being able to take the things that we're passionate about, that usually stems from your purpose too, mm -hmm. you know, you can identify what is it that I'm passionate about in this thing. And maybe your passion is, is a, 
maybe you're an artist and that helped you, you know, overcome something difficult in your life. So your passion is to create beautiful art for people that you sell, or maybe you decide to teach other people how to do the same type of art. And, you know, the, I have a, I have a, a whole process for turning passion into profit, but the, the basics of it, the core of it is to really get clear on the passion and how you're going to sell it. Mm -hmm. So are you selling the actual thing? So is it a product, you know, are you making something or creating something or are you, is it a service where you're teaching someone else something, whether that's teaching them how to do this skill that you have or teaching them how to overcome this thing that you have. Um, And then what I always recommend, especially for new entrepreneurs who maybe don't have, you know, a bunch of testimonials and stuff from other clients. I always say you're your own best story. Mm -hmm. So start taking the pieces of your story, start taking the things that you've learned and you've overcome and use that as your, as your marketing strategy, essentially, you know, spend time uh, brainstorming the things that you've learned, the things that you've came up with, the things that you've overcome and use that in your sharing because when it comes down to making a profit on things obviously it relies on people paying you and the quickest way in my opinion to get someone to pay you is to make them feel something Mm -hmm. so get them emotionally connected to your story I think this is like the basic of, of basics of marketing is get them to know like trust you that's a very commonly known uh phrase in marketing And that comes from telling your story that comes from sharing any ways that you've impacted others. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, using that as a way to show the example of what you're doing for yourself and others so that other people know how to trust you. You can create an emotional feeling out of them and then, you know, then they're willing to pay you for whatever it is that you have to offer. Yeah, awesome. And I try to tell people when they're starting off as entrepreneurs, make sure you are passionate about what you are doing because it's not easy and it get hard sometimes and you're going to want to give up. And if you're not passionate about it, it's going to be easier for you to lay it down. You need to have some type of passion that's going to keep you driven to keep going at it every day to keep you getting to keep you to get out of bed every day to have something like because when you first start off it's not going to always be easy you're going to have some hiccups you're going to have to <laughs> go back and do some things but make sure you are passionate about what you do because that passion is going to help with drives you well, to be successful to me yeah absolutely and I would even say too that of course that's that's what happens at the beginning but anytime too that you're wanting to go to a new level you know make mm-hmm. new money or reach more people or maybe change your product or something those same things that that new uncomfortable growth that you're going into mm-hmm. you're going to go through that same experience of what am I doing is this worth it this is too much I, I whatever you know all those same thoughts and like I said with me sometimes I'm like oh this inner work is so much and I don't want to do it <laughs> like it, it I go back to no if I you know, if, if I don't do my work, Mm -hmm. then I'm not changing anybody's life. And there's no way that I have gone through all the stuff I've gone through in my life to not change people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so I'm using all of this for good. My passion is to literally change women's lives, create freedom and flexibility. And if I give up on myself, I'm giving up on them. And that's unacceptable to me. And so I have a little pity party. I think that's something that is people don't want to acknowledge that we feel this way sometimes. And you just try to push through it. But I think we need to take a few moments, maybe a day, throw Mm -hmm. a temper tantrum, you know, Mm -hmm. be in our feels, be upset, be frustrated and allow ourselves to feel that because that's the reality of life. Mm -hmm. And then you can, then you can, you know, pick your bootstraps back up and, (laughs) and get back to work and what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So with all that being said, you know, being a newly entrepreneur, entrepreneur period, we can experience burnout. So how can we, how can we try to prevent it or not try to have burnout as much as entrepreneur women? Yes. Yes. Burnout is, I think it it stems from a lot of shame when we feel like we need to do, do, do more Mm -hmm. in order to have the success that we desire. So there's a couple ways to overcome burnout. 
Um, first of all, increase your emotional intelligence, whether that's, you know, working really closely with a life coach that specializes in, in emotions um, or working with a therapist mm -hmm. or, um, you know, just just identifying what your limits are. You have to set boundaries for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that can be really difficult because when we're passionate about what we're doing, we want to do it all the time. We want to create, create that success and have that, um, you know, those results. But I think, I think when it comes to burnout, that's one avenue to do it. One way to do it. I always really like to focus on human design, actually, mm -hmm. if, you know, I don't know if anyone's familiar with human design, but it's, it's basically a, a personality type test, but it's not really a personality test. It's based on astrology. You just put in your birthday, birth time, birth place, and you find out what type of um, energy type you have. Mm -hmm. So some people have an unlimited access to energy to be able to do whatever they want at any given moment all day long. Those are generators and manifesting generators. That's 60% of the population, roughly. The other 40% of the population, projectors, manifestors, and reflectors, don't have that energy. I'm a projector, so I do not have the ability to tap into energy at any given moment. My energy ebbs and flows. And so when you can learn what type you are and you can understand that you don't have an unlimited access to energy, you give yourself the permission to just work when you're able to mm -hmm. and set those boundaries, you know, like, okay, I have... I know for me, I can work an hour at a time and then I need a break. Mm -hmm. And so I allow myself to do that. And you you have to, you have to understand that about yourself. You have to set those boundaries on what's important to you. What are your values? What's your definition of success? When you know what success means to you, especially if you can define success outside of a monetary goal or a client goal, um, it makes it really easy. It makes it so much easier to not get into the hustle and stress of making sure you're creating success. Because if you know that success is that, you know, you're trying your very best, then you can be successful every single day and you can be proud of yourself and you don't push yourself past the, the limit that you actually have. Mm -hmm. I think burnout is just really, um, you know, the business world teaches us like entrepreneurs have to work seven days a week for 12 hours a day. And if mm. you're not doing that, then you're not committed enough. But I think that is absolutely incorrect. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has the own, their own brilliant way that they work. And for some people, that's only a few hours a day. And for others, it is 12 hours a day. Mm. And whatever it is for you is perfectly fine. But it really comes down to learning yourself, understanding yourself, knowing who you are and your capabilities and your uh, bandwidth for mm. work. And setting up those systems, setting up those boundaries of this is how long I'm going to work. Maybe you create a schedule where you make sure you take plenty of rest and self-care throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, and I literally will schedule those things in. So like my self-care, my rest, my lunch, like bare necessities here, right? Like make sure you're eating, make sure you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. I schedule those things into my day because if I don't, I will forget to eat because I'll, I'm so passionate about what I, I do. I'll just be working all day. And I know if I do that for more than a week, I'm going to burn out. I actually am just on the upswing. I, 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 I almost burnt out last week because I was so passionate about this new podcast I have. Um, and I was pushing myself and I, I recognized it because I was losing some of that passion. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, if I don't change things like now, mm -hmm. then I'm going to burn out and and I don't want that. So, um, so I changed it. I rescheduled all my meetings <laughs> for that week and I pushed them back. I spread them out over the whole month of February. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I didn't fall into that burnout. I went back to scheduling my, my morning routine, which is two hours long with personal development and self-care and rest. Um, I went back to scheduling my lunch. Like I have a 30 minute lunch break now, because if I don't put it in my schedule, I likely won't eat. Yeah. So those are just a couple, you know, those are multiple tips really in order to really make sure you prevent burnout. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned those things because I had like started doing that. I think last year I started scheduling in like my self care and my rest, like actually putting a actually putting a divine like a set schedule in to where I'm working certain hours. And I actually just this year like I scaled back on some of my hours because I like had <laughs> I had I felt like I had too much of an open window, and I was like, no, nah, I'm just gonna 
make it like from nine to five now. So, cause I got so much going on. I need to make, still make sure I'm getting my rest, still make sure I'm eating, still make sure I have, um, doing the proper self-care time. So I did say that because we have to realize that we are actually humans first. And in the, uh, some people do say that, oh, you might have to work 12 hour days, but it depends on what, how are you, like what day or the time you are most productive. Like with me, uh, even though I'm not a morning person, but if I go ahead and get up, I'm more productive in the morning because I'm trying to go ahead and knock out what I needed to get done. So I could be done for the rest of the day because I'm like uh I'll try to be done so and then some people are more productive in the afternoon because they're more relaxed so just got a lot like you said you had to know um who you are and what you're comfortable with and how well you perform so I'm glad yeah. you did come on and gave us those tips yeah yeah of course I think everyone's different and everyone's unique and <laughs> understanding yourself and knowing what's best for you is like one of the best business <laughs> strategies because I know for me, if I worked even one 12 hour day, I I would be useless for like at least two weeks, yeah. you know, <laughs> and <laughs> instead I can work three or four hours a day and get more done in those three or four hours in one day than I could in a 12 hour day. Because mm -hmm. if I worked a 12 hour day, I'm just, that's just like, I'm already halfway to burnout. Like that's just it's just not at all good for me. And yeah. I get so much more done in three hours than I could if I sat down for 12 hours straight. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's very different from what the business world has taught us for the last, you know, decades. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of people now that are, that are sharing different things and new things, but, um, really just learn to learn to understand what your body is telling you what your intuition is telling you um and, and just do what is best for you yeah yeah well thank you so much miss hannah for being a guest on the show today i'm gonna share um your social media handles and stuff so tell our listeners how they can get in contact with you um mm -hmm. if they would like to render your services Yes. Yes. So the best place to get in touch with me is on Instagram. I spend a lot of my time there. Um, I have a free Facebook group that I'm in. It's primarily for women, <laughs> um, but we're just a community where we're connecting with each other. I'm uh, on TikTok with Hannah Noel. I do a um, complimentary consultation car call specifically for podcast listeners. I don't offer it to anybody else. And so we'll go through for 15 or 20 minutes and identify one area of your business that you want to work on. Um, and I also just recently launched a membership that's only $23 a month, but we have a hot seat coaching call monthly. I do weekly trainings. I have guest speakers come on and I'm in the Facebook group five days a week. Um, answering any questions and basically like doing text coaching essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, I, I have one on one as well. Awesome. Um, and if you guys make sure you check, you guys make sure you check Miss Hannah out, especially that free consultation, because that's hard to come by. A lot of people are not doing free consultations anymore. So you want to take advantage of that. OK, yeah. and if you guys want to get in contact with me. You can do so. My number is 910-317-0396. You can shoot me an email at contact at njfinancial.biz. Um, you can schedule a consultation with me on my website at www.mjfinancial.biz. You can find this episode on Anchor, you guys, and you can find the playback for this video um, on the MJ Financial Management YouTube channel. So thank you once again, Miss Hannah, for being a guest on the show. I highly appreciate you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. And all right, you guys, we will see you on the next episode of Tips with Tea.